Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at what reviewers are saying about the new Asus ROG Ally X. If you don't know anything about this unit as yet, it is basically Asus's pro version of the original Ally. So the first thing I wondered is whether or not it would be worth upgrading to, seeing that it is just an iteration of the original. I'll answer that and I'll also cover aspects like what the experience with the SD card reader on the new unit was, so stick around to find out. Before we get to that, Please note that this video is based off of research and it is not a hands-on experience. It is basically a summary of the experiences of some of the top hands-on reviewers in one concise video. So if you want a quick overview of what the general feedback is with the device, you've come to the right place. I'll also leave links to my source material in the description so you can check those out if you want more detail. If you do find some value from my work, please remember to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. And as always, let me know in the comments if you have thoughts or questions. I always appreciate your input. First up, let's take a quick look at the specs. The unit has the same chip and screen as the original Ally, so I'm not going to go through every detail of the internals. Feel free to pause the screen if you want to look through these at your own pace. The major difference between the X and the OG Ally is the RAM. The X has 24 gig as opposed to 16 in the first Ally. It also runs faster at 7500 mega transfers versus 6500 mega transfers on the old unit. And this does seem to make a difference in performance, but more on that a bit later. It now also has a full 2280 NVMe drive slot, which means that you can install larger drives on this unit than on the original, up to 8 terabytes. These types of drives are also more common and cheaper than the drives in the OG Ally. Lastly, and not to be missed, is the 80 watt hour battery, which is basically double than the original. This is a significant and noteworthy change, as it really makes the X a very different experience to the original and many of the other units in this space. But more on that when we get to performance. On to design and ergonomics then. This is where Asus really did some work, as the Ally X features several design improvements. Firstly, the face buttons are apparently deeper, and the analog sticks have better grip and tension. The D-pad is redesigned for a more premium feel, and the triggers and shoulder buttons are larger and more tactile. The buttons on the back are smaller though, but most reviewers found this to be an improvement, as they are now designed in a way that they can be pressed from multiple angles. The next noteworthy change is that it sports two USB ports. One with USB 4 that supports eGPUs, replacing the propriety XG Mobile port. This makes it easier to add an eGPU if you want one as you are not limited to Asus's XG Mobile options. Cooling-wise, it has improved airflow with three vents and redesigned fans, making it quieter and cooler during extended play sessions. Another positive is that the SD card port has been moved, and apparently none of the reviewers have had issues with the SD cards during testing, so it looks like the problems with this part of the OG unit has been resolved. One downside of the X's design is that it weighs in at 678 grams, so it is heavier than both the original Ally at 608 grams and the Steam Deck OLED at 640 grams, mainly due to the larger battery. Not nice, but this is unfortunately the kind of trade-off that you will have to accommodate if you want more playtime. With that said, let's discuss performance. The ROG Ally X offers slightly better performance over the original Ally, roughly 5-10% in most of the testing I saw. This is mainly due to the increased TDP on different levels and the slightly more and faster memory. The power profiles on the low end are slightly higher than the OG Ally, with its silent mode running at 13 watt as opposed to 10 watt on the OG, and performance mode running at 17 watt, whereas the OG ran at 15. The battery life was the aspect that impressed reviewers the most, as the unit gives you up to two hours of playtime at high settings, and with some tweaking, you can extend that. The 81 hour battery is truly the defining feature of this unit, and made playing at high settings and running resource intensive tasks like PS3 and Xbox 360 emulation more of a plausible thing to do. From the reports, this kind of strain on the system resulted in roughly one hour playtime on the OG Ally, which is a bit of a disappointment for most. The Ally X on the other hand made reviewers feel as though it's much more of an option to play at these settings or run this kind of emulation while on the go, as you can do it for at least two hours which makes it much more appealing. Personally, I agree with them. I mean, who wouldn't want to be able to play your favorite PS3 games while commuting to work every day and back? So, back to the question. After what I found out, would I recommend the Asus ROG Ally as an upgrade? Short answer, no, unfortunately not. There are a myriad of improvements on the X, but unfortunately, in my personal opinion, 
if you already own an alloy that has basically the same performance as the X, it would not be worth the $800 price tag for a new, slightly better unit. I would rather spend the $100 for a battery bank that will get you roughly the same playtime as an Ally X and just carry it along. That may just be me. For you, it may be worth it. A scenario where you sell your Ally and add an extra $500 or so for a new unit may be plausible for some, just not for me at this stage. If you are buying new, I would say that saving a little longer for the new model is something you should definitely consider. Now, the Steam Deck versus the Ally is a completely different can of worms and one which I intend to open in the near future. In the meantime, you can check out my overview on the Steam Deck by clicking on the links on screen now for more detail. That's it for this one though. As always, short, sweet, and to the point. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next tech update.